In this movie, I'd like to make another comparison between Illustrator CC and CS6. So this stems back to a meeting I had uh, a week or so ago with somebody who was quite adamantly telling me that uh, CS6 was fine, they didn't need to change from that at all, and it wouldn't save them any time. And I gave them this demonstration, and their opinion changed. So I'd like to see what you think of this. And I'm going to use this example. So this is a cloud that I've drawn not terribly well. As it happens, I drew it uh, in one of the mobile apps and then sent it across uh, to Illustrator. Uh, and it's got some paths that are incomplete. Now, it doesn't matter whether it's this cloud or any other example. Right, you're going to end up with paths that are sometimes incomplete and you need to tidy them up. And so what typically would happen is people would select endpoints and so on and join those together. So I'm just going to drop across here to another artboard in which I've now put the line segments in red. And if I turn on this layer, you can see the sort of expected trajectory of some of those lines like so. So if I zoom in just here and if I use the endpoint method, so I'm going to switch to my direct selection tool and then select these two endpoints. So what people would probably do is use the average command. So they might use uh, Alt Command J or Alt Control J and then go to the average location of both of those points and then use Command J to join them. Well, you can already see there the effect that that has had on that trajectory, right? It's very, very different. So it's a completely different shape. So I'm just going to back up and just undo that. Of course, you could also go to the endpoints and then kind of draw them where you think uh, they're going to be, right? That's just effectively redrawing the path. And of course, it's dead easy to do here because I've got a guide layer underneath it, and that might not be quite so easy. Um, without that, of course. So you'll do things like that, or what you might do is resort to the pen tool and uh, then just continue drawing there. So if I go and join up to that end segment and then continue the curvature of that path and then draw like so, and then spin that around and then connect to this path and then carry on. You can see there's a bit of a bump in there. That typically happens. And so you'd work your way around and join all of those things together. So if I just undo that just for a second, and I'm just going to use the endpoint method here on all of the open paths just for the minute and just to make this a little bit quicker. So I'll join those two together just there, and I'll join these two together here like so, and I'll join these two together like that, and that's all done. Okay, then all I'd have to do would be to get in and model those paths to how I wanted them to be like this. So right, pretty much redraw those things. I might even have the original paths underneath so I could uh, preserve the original line shapes. So you go through all of this and you get all of these things just right and there'd be a bit of backwards and forwards, uh, toing and froing between uh, the different shapes just there and doing that. And so that would take care of that. And depending on the shape that you're playing with, then, you know, depends how long that would actually take. Then we have a whole other problem in that some of these things overlap. So what would typically happen there, in my experience, is you'd select the line segment and then you'd switch out to something like the scissors tool just there and you'd find that intersection as I'm doing just there and then you'd click to basically snap that path at that particular point or snip it at that particular point. And then you'd have to do that with this path also. Right, so you do that and then you would select that remainder and remove that and then you're back into join tool territory, right? So you'd select those two endpoints and you join those together and then resolve any issues uh, that there are there. And one of the great things or another one of the many great things about uh, Illustrator CC 2015, of course, is that I can zoom in uh, and actually see what's going on with those points just there. So you can see I've actually got two. So what I'd need to do would be to unjoin those two things and perhaps average them just there and then um, join them together. And that didn't work terribly well, so <laughs> it's because I had all the points selected. And these things do happen, right? So you do get accidents like that. Anyway, I'm sure you get the idea. So we spent a good few minutes looking at that 
and trying that out. So I'm going to go now to another artboard just here where I've got exactly the same paths. So the steps were I had to select the bits that I needed to work with, then I needed to work with them, then I needed to tune them in just about every case. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to swap out to the join tool right, which is in the pencil tool family just here in the new shaper tool of course and I've even put that into my special custom toolbar just here so I can get it quickly. So with no selection all I need to do is to brush across these and you can see that the trajectory there is preserved. Any overlaps are removed and I'm doing this in just seconds just by brushing across it and just to show you that is a continuous shape I'll swap the fill and stroke just there so you can make up your own mind I could do this in just a couple of seconds effectively and it took me at least a few minutes to do the other so there's my comparison for you